Start out with invocation by Henry, followed by the flag salute. Father in heaven, we thank you for the abundant blessings that you bestow upon us. Today I raise up our commissioners and pray that you will grant them wisdom and your guidance. And Lord, I want to say a special prayer for our nation today. Over two centuries ago, you guided a group of men, our founding fathers, to bring forth this nation in freedom, in justice, and belief in you. Lord, we are descending so fast. We need your help to preserve this nation. It seems our elected officials have no respect at all for your commandments and your laws. Our major cities are becoming modern day Sodom and Gomorrahs. Lord, help those of us who believe to stand up and not be intimidated by Satan and his minions. Help us to save this great nation that you inspired. Lord, I offer this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Administrative Have the minutes of June twenty fourth, and then the minutes of June twenty eighth. Okay. Yeah. Time to review those minutes. given me some documents to sign for the health department grants and it was all in your packet. Mm -hmm. okay. They're all marked. There are two sets to sign. For, for all three of us. Uh, mm -hmm. So sign under the author was his authorized signature. Yes. So that's the chairman's signature. Yeah, on all of the documents, it looks like just chair.
The, um, the resolution to set the solid waste assessment fee and uh, that was in your packet last week for review and um, didn't know if you're ready to go ahead and adopt that this is about the time of year that we normally do that so. is there any commission discussion on the solid waste fee uh, yeah we're raising it up to what a hundred dollars that's what it is yes. uh, yeah this doesn't raise it you're just you're just actually renewing it Yes, we have to pass that every year. So okay. if you if the commission wants to change it, then we would need to put that into the resolution. I'm not in favor of raising it. <laughs> we just did that. We did that last year. It's up for discussion, Randy. Even though we may not be able to pay for a transfer station, well, the yes. <clears throat> Just, just, I agree. I'm not against you. I'm just reminding I you. Under, we under, totally understand <laughs> after the figures that we wrote right. the other day. Yeah. Is there a resolution number? Yeah. Okay, this is Marion County, Kansas, resolution number 2019-09, a resolution establishing a service fee for 2020 for solid waste facilities, assessing the fee on real property, and establishing the manner of collection of the solid waste fee. Is there a motion to approve this motion? I haven't made the motion yet, okay. but I will make a motion to go ahead and approve uh, resolution. 2019-09. Second. Removed and second. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. Aye. administrative that I've had. 
Okay, I uh, I had a request from a taxpaying resident of Marion County uh, to hold a special event 5K race on uh, 290th uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, called me and wanted to know what what type of procedures they needed to follow in order to do that. So Tina thought probably best best to. I don't, their intent is not <clears throat> not to close the road, but, uh, and it won't be too many people. It's actually it's actually a family reunion, which I guess every five years they have five K race. So, being the two ninetieth is a hard surfaced road. <coughs> they were wanting to know if they had if they could get permission or sign or had a permit or what we needed to follow to do that. I don't, I don't have no problem with it, but I guess as government works, uh, so we give them, we give them the okay to do it. And as we all know, <coughs> excuse me, as we all know that 290 is pretty narrow. Is this just a run, not bicycles or anything? This no, is, this is not run. It's not the first time that 290 yeah. has been used. Of course, no. Hillsboro has used the Indigo as a half marathon in the past, also. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wonder when we give them the blessing, do we put ourselves in jeopardy? Well, that's, that's, that's just if yeah. we need to have a document signed, a liability waiver, or whatever that would be. It's a pretty heavily traveled road. I would assume harvest would be just about over by then, but. Yeah, rain's coming tomorrow. Oh, well, it won't be over. <laughs> Just um, what Bryce wanted to hear. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have look. a problem with it as long as we're not in any type of liability. Yeah, I don't like, either. Gee, right on, I don't know. Like, I don't either. Well, maybe Brad will be here later. We could ask him. Okay. Matt, what kind of risk we would be at live? It might, but it I might, it might be no that, you know, we need to, because. Uh, I sure don't have a problem either. I know it's been done in the past, right. and I'm not sure if. It was done with any kind of well, we run around county, the county, county blessing. The county lake, we used the airport or the Lakeshore Drive around County Lake for marathon quite a bit. That's I right, guess. every year. Yeah, it's, it's another one that's used quite a bit. So. But we've never no. asked for a liability. It's a, I guess my, my concern is a double edged sword because you got every other person walking or running out there, they don't, they don't sign the waiver, but they come to us requesting that, so now that's I mean, trouble. Just, yeah. yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm talking about a larger group, although sure. I'm guessing this yeah. is not going to be more than probably 10 or 15 people. Yeah. And of course, you, it, I'm guess I'm just going to say this, is probably, we don't have to worry about the people running out there, it's the people that are driving out there, like the right. or whatever else, and that's just something you have to be when you're driving you have to worry about the same situation. And you know you do see that all the time as you're driving down the road there's what five, ten, fifteen bicyclers you gotta go around or people walking, whatever their occasion is. You know, it's just out there all the time at different places. And I think people used to say I could bicycle get out of the way. Well that's the wrong attitude today. Yeah. They've got just as much road right away as anybody yeah. else does. Amazing. Well, you know, I appreciate the individual calling me and asking. Oh, yes, because yes. It's done. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and I do know that uh, the state actually, I think, has to get blessing on the bike across Kansas, Kansas and, yeah. and all that other stuff, you know, and they actually designate which route you go and stuff. So, I mean, I don't, I'm sure it's probably the same thing with them as they, you know, you have to sign a waiver when you sign up, but at least they specify which road you, they want you to stay on. To. I think that's, I think you just said it for ISIS. We need to sign, sign something that we, give you the blessing to use our roads, but we have no, no responsibility in it. Like that. And I mean, it's honestly, it's the, it's the polite thing to do to yeah. let them know you're going to be out there because anybody else can run out there. Yeah. We don't know that. No. And, and, yeah, I, I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. We do have a special events permit that we can utilize. Um, that does have a $50 fee associated with it, but in the past, the commissioners have waived the fee in certain instances. So. Um, if, when Brad gets here, if, if he doesn't have any issue with it, perhaps you know we could have them just fill out that special events permit. The commission could take action to the approve waiver, yeah. and to waive the fee. So I'm I'm agree with everybody here. I don't have a problem. Does that does that have a liability waiver as part of it? Do you know? I don't remember what all is on that form. Well, do we want to give blessing to it? 
contingent on yeah you know, whatever step needs to be taken yeah based on what yeah. Brad might suggest that's fine yeah I make, how to make a motion to do that then to prove contingent so Brad, on on council second okay, it's been moved and second all those in favor aye, aye. Okay, road and bridge, right? All right. Well, we uh, gave us an honest shot on that material processor for the five thousand dollars. It went for twenty-eight thousand two hundred. So that's basically what they told us it probably would go for. So in the future, we get some idea if we ever if we want to go down that way. Yeah. So, um, we uh, we have a new member of the county, Josh. Uh, his wife had a baby girl, number three. So uh, just information and uh Josh Clevenger. What's that? Josh. Our, our mechanic. Yeah Josh. Yeah. Houseman. Yeah. Houseman. Houseman. Yeah, not yeah. Clevenger. Sorry. Um yeah. But, yeah, that was last week he just got a call. I gotta leave now and out the door he went. So <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, a little bit early and had some complications, but I guess everybody's doing well. So but anyway. Um I have a mechanic position or that's going to be vacant. Uh, I'd like commission approval to advertise as soon as possible to try to get that turned around because mechanics are pretty hard to come by. And so that's going to be a problem with that. Uh, Andy has some puzzle books. So. How many mechanics do we have? We have Tom and then uh, Pat and Josh. So. so you have a resignation one? Um, transfer. They seem to go, but he's he's leaving. He's leaving for the right reasons. That you know, know and look for a diesel mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that and that's why I said I'd like to try to get going as soon as I can because it's gonna. It's not like you just get somebody off the street or something like that. I'd like to maybe push some more like technical schools or some things like that to try to get somebody. Yeah. I can only hope we can find somebody. Like I said that's gonna be effective uh, at the end of this paper. So that's one, two, Yeah, as long as you, as long as you have a resignation yep. coming in yes. or something to that yep. effect. Yep. Yeah, I have a problem. Okay. Uh, let the commission know on August 14th, 9 a.m., uh, we are having an LRSP meeting at the basement of the city. I don't know if any or all of you want to show up. Uh, the LSRP, LRSP is Local Road Safety Program. It's a uh, a uh, program uh, money coming from the state and federal that uh, they come out and they actually look at all the intersections and roads in the county to determine if there's any issues for safety I mean have a lot of accidents at intersections or stuff to that effect um, they're actually going to come out and investigate that Jesse's done most of the leg, leg work um, uh, the last couple of months but anyway they're going to a meeting on that date um, it also involves uh, EMS, the sheriff, the school districts, and all that stuff. They're, we're all going to get together so that they can. There may be information that we don't know about out there too. So, but just give you an idea that if any one of you want to, obviously, if you know more than one of you wants to be there, then we'd have to make an open meeting. And honestly, I don't know if it'd be really that exciting, but it's just common courtesy that because they're going to talk about a lot of statistics and stuff like that. All this important. Yes, August 14th at 9 a.m. in the basement of the city. You might shoot us an email for Okay. okay. So, um, kind of talked about before that uh, I'd like to um, use our skidster a little bit more um, for, for uh, tree removal and dirt removal, stuff like that. But being a rubber tire, it's pretty tough to use out uh, off road if you want to save the ditches. I talked about possibly wanting to get rid of the old machine and trade it in whatever else to get a new one. Well, uh, I was out at the county lake when the guys were blade patching and it just dawned on me that maybe we could work out a deal to where um, we could take our old one to the county lake, let them use it for stuff like that, and then we wouldn't, I say, lose the advantage of, uh, you know, to trade in and make the money. They could have ours and then we could just get a new one with the tracks on it. And, they're talking roughly sixty thousand dollars trade. That's just a uh, number. I say trade for a new one. sixty thousand dollars, and that obviously we wouldn't specify any certain brand. We would go up with the same specs. 
but then that way Isaac would have the the rubber tire loader. The rubber tire uh, would be in the smooth bucket and the teeth bucket. Any of the attachments we still have would be uh, be able to work with those machines because I talked to him. You know, he could use our our tree cutting saw in the front of there to get rid of stuff because a lot of the stuff that he cut is, is just inaccessible. Uh, you never know what you what you've got down on some of the hills. Um, it's got the two speed, uh, so he could you know get up and down the, the lakes pretty quick. So just something for you guys to think about. Like I said, we're we're in no urgency for it. But it's <laughs> something else to think about. <laughs> Hopefully, caught up more on the on the roads. I like to get back into using that skid steer. They're, they're, they're a tremendous asset when it comes to working in off road conditions. So, just solid rubber tires won't work. Well, the problem is in mud, they're absolutely helpless. Yeah, yeah. You, you go down, and, and then the other problem is you go down and you dig a bucket load. Well, then your your rear end is up in the air, and you can't even get out. You, you spend more time pulling out than anything else. Um, plus, a uh, track machine has more ground contact. Gives you more digging capacity, and and then sixty thousand dollars would approximate the same machine, the same size machine, so it wouldn't be any bigger. But like I said, all the attachments would work straight across. They're all pretty much universal. So, but and I don't know if you want to talk to you know, Isaac about too, because I talked to him. He said, man, he would he would be all over there because I think he'd be able to just got a little tractor and blade out there and um, bricked up them to do anything. But you know, like I said, he'd be able to. And I don't know what he spends if he spends any money on you know, tree trimming. And, other excavator work stuff like that. So, but like I said, there's something to consider down the road. But, and I can maybe find out more information about it. But this was just something up last week. So, um, like to get the commission's, um, I guess, discussion or blessing on it. I thought about having a booth at the county fair um, due to all the stuff that we've had with the damage, um, public safety, and stuff like that. If you'd have a problem if I had a booth over there to discuss a lot of the issues, be available to people because you know we had a lot of these damaging issues, stuff like that. So I mean I wouldn't have a problem to it, that's whatever else, but I can get a lot of safety stuff and we can talk about emergency management stuff, what we have to do, and things like that, just more for information. So I have no problem. That could be a good idea. Okay. Sounds good all any type of communication with you know, the public good. Sure. You know, like I said, there's a lot of things that we can talk about that people may or may not be aware of. So okay. Alright, just assign some hours that you're gonna be there. Sure. Three hours. Sure. Uh, well I'm saying the first right off the get go that yeah, you're gonna be there. And, and stuff like that. So I'm excited for the parade just is it Thursday night? Wednesday night? Okay. Whatever it is. But anyway, I'll I'll continue to that as well. So um, have uh, three new employees, temporary employees. One of them started today. Um, they're all going to be. Uh, you say these are temporary? Yes. Some of them. Okay. Uh, first one is uh, Aiden Zaboda. Good part time summer help, $10 an hour. All above 16. Yes. The. Uh, the two that start next week are actually about are actual 18 and 8 and 17. Um, but we um, talking over people that are um, very responsible kids, and we're not going to put him in, you know, the other, other situations that may cause problems. Uh, Kyle Wanger, part-time summer help, $10 an hour. Part-time summer help, $10 an hour. I think I'll be doing a lot of patching. Uh, flagging, mowing, weed eating, stuff to that effect. So. Yeah, I'll find it. We've been trying to find someone else in uh, backhoe bids, uh, we went out with backhoe bids and are due in two weeks. Uh, we basically set it up to where we, we sent it to Cat, John Deere, Ace, and JCB. So um, we'll get those back, we can make a decision. So, so. That's not part of the deal where we're having to replace the engine on it. No, that's separate. And that, that machine should be back up maybe tomorrow, if not the next day. Of course, we got uh, both Pat and Josh off now, so, or not Pat, uh, Tom. 
some job stuff now, so Pat, but he's been doing a good job. So, uh, yeah, the motor's in and the radiator's in and everything else, it's just a matter of buttoning up. So. Had one in close proximity motor. What's that? Had a motor. Yeah, close. it actually came in uh, last month. Wow. Uh, and it was like a two or three day turnaround, which yeah, is exceptional cool. for what we need. So it, that was still the best way to go. So they had they a had, uh, little bit of trouble getting the old one out. That's maybe just trying to figure out how to do it. That's all the others. Basically, got to take out the whole front end of it. But anyway, um, let you know that probably next week or something out of that, depending on. Since Randy's talking about this, what this rain coming in, uh, we have an awful lot of erosion on the um, the south side of 260th between Kansas and uh, east of there, where the reservoir is. Um, we were driving along there and noticed a couple washouts. Well, we got to look, and basically the whole whole side of there, all the rip rep's gone, the guardrails falling over. So we're going to go in and just close the whole road, take the guardrail out, put it back to where it should be. For this will all be FEMA stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll get reimbursed from that, but um, probably going to take a week of, you know, like I said, we're going to close the road because we've got guardrail on both sides. It's just the safest thing to do with the road guardrail. Between which two roads? Uh, Kansas East. We'll probably go to the next road. And, um, so, but anyway, they, uh, like I said, it was just a lot worse than what we thought when we first started looking. So but we'll close that. We'll have to get some big rock, and, and we may, um, you know, based on the big rock, whatever else, I uh, wouldn't want to really damage. I mean, the bigger rock has a bigger, bigger propensity to damage trucks, and they just lift us you know, higher up some barrel dumps or something like that that are meant for that. You know, probably haul for one or two days, whatever it is. Just, I mean, matter of getting the material out there, we just have to place it. So, um, but anyway, we'll do that. And then uh, this is probably for uh, Randy as much as anything else. Um, we have a closure on 180th between Upland and 77. And according to the resolution 2319, 2013-19, it says a half mile 180th beginning a half mile east of Upland and ending in Highway 77. So basically what you're saying is the, the first mile, half mile off of Upland, we need to keep over there. Because they, they told me what it says, it has to keep all easements for in, ingress and egress for utilities that are present shall be preserved. Yeah, I think the people on the north side of the road is the ones that comes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just asked. Or you, south side, excuse me, south okay. side of the road. South side we, of the road. We've got the type three barricades out there. It hasn't been mowed, so that's what we're trying to find out. So mm -hmm. by doing that, we can go back and, and mow it or whatever else. And I would like to do more of a fixed barricade or something else because I guess the bridge is totally out down there uh, in that area. Yeah. Of course, coming from the east, he already has a gate across there. Yeah. That um, was one of the reasons why right in there is why it was shut down. Right, right. Bridge. And I'd, I'd like to. Uh, I'm going to talk to Kate on to see. Um, you know, if that's, you know, if we've got the resolution, their right away seems to go way down their part. So we need to find out if we can put a sign up on top. I mean, just for a matter of yeah. the yeah. regulatory yeah. sign. Right. So anyway, but just want to make sure that's what the intention was. So we'll go back right. and and get that mode and get it open back up and try to put more of a fixed barricade. Okay. You'll see the gates up there. There's a gate to where the comes out to that up on the road. From from the highway? No, or you mean no, from, no. From, from the from the south side of the road to the farmer's field. Oh, okay, okay. Coming out to that road is the only reason why that was left. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm coming to find out. I was, I was out there looking at it and uh, looked great and everything else. Drove around the barricades and it's just whoosh, right down into some standing water. So we've got some drainage issues. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the main reason yeah. I wanted to try to figure out what was going on and then I found the resolution. So mm -hmm. we'll work on that. Okay. So um, I think that's it. I've got a couple roads here and got calls on Friday and Saturday. Uh, uh, Stringtown Road in Florence, the, coming over the old bridge, going out to the highway, the back road there. Mm -hmm. A couple years ago, the road and bridge took out a bunch of trees through there and piled them up. Yeah. And never, never went back and burned them or anything in the winter time. North side, south side of the road. North side of the road. This road takes care of all the water clear from the top of the old rock quarry. Mm -hmm. it comes down to Highway 50, goes under Highway 50, and goes all through this, all through this part down there. I drove clear to the top yesterday just to see what all we're facing. There's a half mile hill facing there. There's quite a bit of water comes through there. So I'd like for you to go down and look at it and give us a recommendation. The owner has got a wheat field back there he can't get to right now because of standing water. Okay. Uh, 
some private landowner went in and cleaned the ditch, just shoved it so the water instead of going across that brick road. Yeah. Uh, so that's about two blocks there that's all in the county road right away. It's the old brick road. I've under, I understand that this has been a problem in the past. There's been several issues. Obviously, all that water coming down to that culvert and then it comes to an area that may or may not have drained before. I guess they, they've um, talked about going in and digging out the north ditch because I guess yeah. that's where the water's supposed it to needs go. It. Yeah. yeah, it's just we haven't, we haven't got to that point and with all the silt and flooding and stuff that's in there. So yeah, we've, we've definitely, uh, Jesse and I talked about that one okay. person that talked about it's, here, so. it's needing that. When you get ready to do something, please call Locates in because there's no road to gas line down in there. That's, These gas lines. Yeah, well, they're just everywhere, I mean, aren't they? You know, you yeah. think you need them or something. Uh, so, Oh, we, have, we have to call call locates. Okay. So. Then the other one that was called to me was 30th from Highway 77 all the way across to Timber. It's about probably eight miles or so. And I drove it yesterday. And the one of the I think the reason why it was there was because the complaint was the Baylor, not the Baylor, the Swather couldn't get across. Okay. Well, he did, but it's. It's got a pond there that has filled up and busted the dam. When it busted, it took a swath about six wide and about six deep, just right straight across the road. I mean, when that pond busted for all the heavy rains. Somewhere down around 30th and UB, Vista, somewhere down in that area. Yeah. You just need to drive 30th all the way. Every one of our low dips across there has got about a 100 yard washout. I've got some pictures of the fence that it's taken out, the pond that it's took out the road. The whole 30th across there is just ugly. Is that the one? Uh, south of 40th, the blacktop yeah. coming oh, from no. Timber, just one mile south of blacktop. I was thinking it was across that last week. Maybe uh, if, you, yeah. if you went across it, you would forget it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it Radio, is. Honestly. And it's just in those washes. I mean, sure. the rest of the road's not too bad. Our, yeah. our greater person's been trying to do something with the rest of the road, but you get down to those washes and they're just, yeah. they're just ugly. Uh, but I think. Especially think, with the swath, and that's not a good I think FEMA really needs to, we need to try yeah. capturing something off of it because there's, there's a whole eight miles just on one road. Yeah. And I know it's the next road south, 20th, don't look no better probably. I didn't I didn't drive 20th yesterday, but all yeah. the water from 30th goes through 20th. Sure. Going south, which is Butler County. Okay. So, I'd like for you to look at them, see what we can do with them. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple roads I'd like to mention also. Um, and this is up in the project, and I don't know if Linda yep. called you yet. Yep. She did? Yep. Okay. I knew she was going to build. And Annell and Kirk and Michael and me. Um, and then her complaint, of course, is the dust. And um, so I'm sure she probably told you that traffic on the road. There's so much traffic, heavy traffic, all of the equipment and all that type of stuff. And going up and down, and she can't hang out laundry and stuff. She, so she told me was angry. One of the biggest complaints was that she said they're blading my road once a week. Yes, that's and, what she said. And I said, well, I don't know why they are unless they're running equipment up down there, because we basically told them since they're running equipment up down there, we want to blade it. Well, it, it does create more dust, so you start moving that stuff around. Now, obviously, I'm assuming they haven't been using a water truck or enough water, whatever the case may be. No, I sent an email this morning to Dave and uh, see what we could do, but I told us that that was the only other thing I could think of was if they're running equipment up and down there, then they're supposed to be blading in water. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but. and that's what well, that's what she was telling me about. She said, "Tell them to stay off the road. Don't be blading it." Is that what she told you? Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't be blade. Blade it too much. Yep. Um, but then also, I have on uh, three thirtieth and. Um, okay, so yeah, there was a culvert that was installed actually at a uh, person's entrance, and the culvert was installed improperly. And so this person told them to take it out, and it was a 24-inch culvert, uh, round. Well, they dug it so deep that only six inches stuck up anyway. So anyway, the resident told them to take it out. So in case there's any repercussion from that, they said they'll, they'll talk to you about that. Because they didn't, yeah, they didn't want it, you know, they said it served no purpose. And the way, it, the way they run that access road up the hill to the um, turbine site, well, now the water runs, because now we don't have a, a ditch there anymore because they widened the road and all that's gone. Well, now the way the water runs down, it bypasses the culvert anyway and runs across the road. You said this is 330? This right here is at, um, 
Indigo, one half mile north of 330th. Um, yes, and then there's one of them, and that is a culvert that was crushed by um, an L um, months and months and months ago. This, this culvert here, you're talking about? The one here, Kansas yes. and 340. Oh, okay. Are you, are you already aware of that one? So they, they, they crushed it, and they were aware that they had crushed it and said they were going to go ahead and replace it. And then it was brought to their attention a couple times already. And, and it is off the haul route. It's okay. just off the haul route. But okay. as they were using our road, so it's one of ours. Yeah. And so they and they okay. admit that they've done it, but they I haven't can... replaced it yet. So we just don't want to get that forgotten because um, at this point in time, they're just kind of like, well, they're, they're, they've got so much going on that you know, they just haven't gotten to it. But yeah, we've, we've had several discussions. We've got several pipes and intersections up there that we're looking at uh, for drainage and stuff like that. Um, so um, that's the other thing I did forget that is um, Chisholm and 360 comes up to a T intersection. And when you go west of there, it's basically a minimum maintenance road. It's still a county road, but I guess the landowner has talked about maybe wanting to get the road closed. Okay. Can you give me any more information as to What's transpired? Where do we need to go with this? Because there's a lot of drainage that we need to. The other landowners are against it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's well, that's that's why I'm asking. I mean, I, that was the first I heard about them last week. So, um, but we've got to worry about getting drainage through there because all the water comes down there. This isn't the right now. Is that the west of the springs? Yeah. Or east of the springs? Again. East of the east springs going in. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Well, like I said, I just. Anyway, and there was other roads too where, of course, we'll wait till the rain comes, the rain is forecast, and we'll try to see where. A lot of this is happening where they put the towels and it's bypassing and it's washing out. So it's just really well, that's, it's something when, and that's what Kirk and Michael's keeping their eyes on. Yeah. So, but just pick yeah. it up, that's right. Sure. Okay? Yes. That's all I got. Well, I got one from Canada from South Florence. So I don't know that is. Uh, Diane, you brought up an interesting I'm going to bring it up to Bryce and just see. Bryce, when we do this, when we cut a culvert in and, and make two ditches on both sides of the road going up to either either to a person's house or to a wind turbine, whichever, we just funnel all the water off that hill right to our road and it causes a lot of problems. Is there any cautionary methods we can do to that? I mean, because I know of one driveway that needs a bigger tube because of it now. That's, that's something that I'm going to just speaking from experience probably was never addressed in any of that information when you make a road up there obviously a hard packed road is going to drain more than what pasture or anything else yeah that water probably does come down there um, and that's something i think i can work with at l not a problem because they, they've got to understand that too um, you know typically we're using existing structures and hydraulically speaking that any time you send more water down there you can have issue. Now the other thing that I've talked to Jesse about is, you know, right now the minimum size culvert they use is 18 inch. As he said, they have used 15 before, and I said, honestly, no. I would like to stick no smaller than 18. Actually, I'd like to stick no smaller than 24, simply because the smaller pipes can plug up, and once they're plugged up, they're, they're useless. 24 at least provides you some sort of, you know, clean out possibility. So that's something to look at too. Maybe it just needs a bigger pipe or a bigger ditch. Even no relationship to wind farms when a person builds a farm or goes in and cuts a new house in. Sure, sure. They, they like a nice road to it and then they yeah. cut ditches on both sides and all yeah. of a sudden the field water that was absorbed in the field is down on our road. Yeah, yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, and, and honestly that's, you know, stuff I'm looking at. We've got pipes plugged all over the place that may need a new yeah. pipe or just clean that up. <laughs> yeah. But obviously if you can get those calls, whatever else, please send them to me. You know, that's, I'm not running around a lot. I was. Just text you the road. Which is always on Saturday. I know. Well, I always say don't. I know it's Saturday, <laughs> okay. don't. That's when they call me. I understand. Yeah, I understand. That's Not a problem. problem. That's what my phone is. got mine this weekend, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, like I said. But that doesn't mean I'm telling you. I'm asking you to do it right now. No, no, no. So. But I, I, I've, I've got some stuff there, so a little time to try to find this stuff. On that north road east there, try figuring out where we can put a decent culvert in so that the farmer can get to his field. Right now, he can't get to it. Yeah, so well, I'm we'll see. Yeah, because Jess and I, the first, well, first week we went down to the Florence Bridge, we're going to the and we drove in that yeah. way. Okay. I mean, it's just a, it's a yeah. bad, bad range, plain and simple. I didn't realize how much water was taken on down yeah. there until I go yeah. clear to the top of the little rock quarry yeah. up there. And that water comes shooting down pretty yeah. fast. And it's, yeah. I don't, 
That is like a pretty good sized culvert underneath the road. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. So, okay. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah, Commissioner. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Zoning, what they've done has come to us. We've been through this before. My question to you is to both of you two, and we'll just leave him out for a little bit, I guess. <laughs> but uh, procedures from here to there, because we sign a CUP, we don't have a pilot in place, we don't have a road agreement in place, we don't have none of that. Procedures. Do they have to be done this way, CUP first? Does it, uh, does it, can we have a road agreement, pilot agreement, then then sign the CUP? I mean, do we, are we tied to certain regulations that this procedure has to be followed? The, the, see, the next thing that's gonna happen is that you'll make a decision on the CUP and you've also got a decision to make on the development one. And that decision can be to Prove what it is that the planning commission has recommended, or to do something different from what they've recommended, and that can either be a modified approval or a denial, or you can send it back to the planning commission. Those are going to be your options on what to do, uh, and that's what you're going to discuss next week, as I understand it. You'll be making a decision right now. The way it's structured is that the the public the ancillary agreements come after the conditional use is approved. Because if it's not approved, there's no point in having those agreements. And they can't proceed with the construction without having those agreements in place. So what we will have is a window between, if, if what you do is approve a CUP, we'll have a window between the approval of the CUP and the time at which they can commence construction where we're going to have to come to terms on these ancillary agreements. And in the absence of those ancillary agreements, the CUP will not give them the power to commence construction. The, uh, the applicant, in terms of what you're doing next week, I told you there are three options. The applicant's preferred option is going to be to make a few changes to what was recommended by the planning commission. Um, and then their secondary option, of course, would be the, the agreement with what the planning commission suggested. Or, or okay. Seems like 
last time we come to a pretty big hassle over with the other company, a road bridge agreement. That's true. Okay. And, and, and so we will, we will again have a negotiation about that. What, the, what we try to do is to build in as much of the outline of that, what that would look like as we could into the conditional use permit. So they know what they're expect, what, what's expected. They also, at, at this point, this applicant knows what it is that we had as expenditures for the engineer on the last project, which the, on the last project they, they, were, they were surprised by the magnitude of that, that what was being asked of them. And here, we've tried to be clear that what they're expect, what's expected of, will be expected of them that are going to make this I, and the commission, we have not discussed this between the commission. Um, the road agreement has been a thing all the way through this other project up north. We have an engineer on board now, and I didn't, I was gonna, that was one of my other questions to Bryce was have his feelings on this too, and I think we need to talk to him about it. If, if the commission would uh, work with Bryce being an engineer and being over it and maybe a I call them, so right down here, the road police patrol. That's really, <laughs> that's what it seems like to me, what we've accomplished out there up north, which we need somebody out there doing what they've done. Whether we need the kind of money that we spent up there, I, I don't know if it happens. I'm just saying that maybe the money could be used to pay our engineer salary and some of this through and have a still have a road police patrol out there doing what I don't know, Tanner, not Tanner, but uh, some of the other guys have had out there inspection. So, so that's that's something that needs to be whether we need to have that decision made ourselves, whether we would and Bryce, whether we would uh, whether he would be interested in doing that for us, or so. Just that's that's my concern is procedure between now whether the CUP is given. If the CUP is given, and we come back and we don't get together on a road agreement. CUP goes away. Well, see, eventually it goes away. They can't. Okay. They, they can't. They have to be commence construction within a limited period of time. And if they don't do that, then the CUP goes away. Okay. And there's a timetable with respect to the road maintenance agreement expectations in the proposal right now from the planning commission. And okay. It, it calls mm -hmm. for a, a, an initial draft proposal from the applicant, which they've actually already provided, yeah. and then I think we have 120 days expectation of being able to work out the, what the terms are going to be. So what I would expect is that if what happens next week is that you vote to approve the, uh, the official use permit, that we're going to have an executive session to talk about the negotiation of the road maintenance agreement shortly there. I'll rest my case right now and let the rest of the commissioners. So I remember from the last one up, uh, one of the biggest problems that we had with the road maintenance agreement was one. But the bigger one was the pilot agreement. It took us six months or more to get that and a lot of legal fees. And then when we finally did get the pilot agreement, personally, I thought we got the shaft compared to the counties. Uh, for us to receive a measly 200 and some thousand dollars a year, and then they're coming back and taking money away from us on Kirk and Michael when they agreed in the road maintenance agreement to pay that price even though they didn't like it, they did agree and they did sign it. So we get the bullet. Um, compared to other counties, other counties with the same company up north now uh, are making a million dollars a year, half a million dollars a year. And here comes Marion County, a bunch of suckers, and we get virtually nothing. And so that's one that really concerns me. The second one is the road maintenance agreement. Um, I think I asked Mr. Kelstring uh, early on about hiring Kirk and Michael, and I know his feelings is to have, I think that's what he responded, was the engineer. Personally, I think that for all the taxpayers of the county to have to pay our engineer, especially right now since our roads have been through a lot, I think it's a, it is a terrible thing to ask of us to have our taxpayers throughout the county to pay to babysit the roads. And I know Kirk and Michael saved us a lot of money up there um, through fines and just being there and forcing the regulations and stuff like that. I know they have. 
and the road maintenance agreement can, uh, that, that, that is a decision you'll need to make about what, what sort you want to take on what uh, we'll call the policing of the roads. With respect to the pilot, that is a, an issue we, if the CUP is approved, it's not it's not part of the, the CUP process, it's something separate, and it is a, a agreement by the applicant to pay whatever it is that they're that they are paying. Um, there's not a corresponding lever, if you will. There, this, is, this is a payment in lieu of taxes that is a voluntary commitment. It is true that different projects have different amounts that they've been that they that they've been willing to pay. And that's something that we'll we'll find out and we'll work through if we have an approval of the CEO. So where do we stand on the protest petition? Does anybody know the answer yes. to that? I mean, is there any any news on that? I've been sitting on the edge of my chair. What's going on? Certainly. Well, Monday was the close of the protest, the two-week protest petition uh, window, if you will. And I believe there was 34 protest filed with the county clerk uh, on that affected approximately 58 different properties. Uh, of those, 11 were within the thousand foot notification buffer and would count towards uh, that 20% threshold that would ultimately uh, decide voting requirements. Uh, and the calculations came to just over 6% of the area within that notification uh, boundary uh, filed protest. So we did not, we failed to meet uh, the 20% threshold for the three quarter majority and super majority voting requirements. So uh, any action by the Board of County Commissioners will, will take on the Appointed for whatever circumstance, two out of the three commissioners to either support the recommendation from the planning commission and approve it, uh, two thirds uh, the same, two out of the three commissioners to modify the conditions that's recommended, and two thirds to deny. So, what you're saying is the protest the petition is a non issue at this point? That's correct. other questions of the commission? Um, I think one of the, the questions is the procedure that the commission wants to use. We've had the public hearing, and so there is no necessity uh, at the next meeting with respect to your decision of having public hearing. And I, get, I think one of the things that probably everyone would, would like to know is what is your procedure going to be on that? Is the applicant, as I mentioned, has some modifications that the applicant would like to ask for, but those are things that Sharon is familiar with, and so she can advise you about what those are, or I can advise you about what those are. Or you can give the applicant the opportunity to address those things that are changes from the planning commission's recommendation. Uh, but I think it would be helpful to have some guidance about how you'd like to proceed procedurally. I can give you my, my, I mean, we've been through the hearing process at the, at the commission level, at the planning and zoning commission, I think there's been adequate time for everyone to express their uh, whichever direction they're leaning. Uh, I personally would uh, like to see that closed comment, no public comment. Add one more part on the when we go through the process. Right. Yeah. I've got one more thing that I didn't answer that like I said I was falling back on something else. We have given CUPs for part of this project already, correct? correct? In that, there was already some agreements worked out with schools and things for payment with that. Uh, where exactly with those permits do we stand right now? on school payments and things like that that's already given, not not to the new one, not to the new permit. I haven't seen those pilot agreements. I, I, I didn't, you know, the, the, I'm hearing it for the first time that there are pilot agreements for first time. Okay. So I need to look at those. I'm sorry, they're not pilot agreements because nothing was agreed, but they are proposals. Proposals, okay. yeah. okay. I, I guess that's what right. well, well, then, well. then, then where we are is simply that once, if the, if the CUP is approved, we will have a proposal from this applicant with respect to this project, and it will be for all the CUPs. Okay. There was and no it, may or, it may or may not 
match what was what proposed previously. There was no ancillary agreements with the approved CUPs, correct? I, I'm not aware of any. Okay. It never went anywhere. They just got approval of the CUP. Nothing was ever discussed or finalized. They're just hanging there as proposed. I would have to check that because there are signed agreements somewhere um, on all the Doyle um, projects for road maintenance and pilot. So we would have to check back to see what actions were taken uh, by the board for official. So where would those documents be? They're with all of the. I have all the Doyles on a sub drive, the whole thing, and there's no signed agreements on any of them that I was given. They're in they're my, all my thumb drive. So I just need to check to see what action was taken because I really don't remember um, that was before. Would the board <clears throat> care whether I asked Mr. Pelstrin to address this situation? I knew how to do that on well, pilot. The, one of the things that I want to make sure that we, we avoid is having an appearance that what happens with the CUP is dependent on what monies are voluntarily offered to the commission. So our decision is about the merits of this project as it, and the automatic consequences that, that, that bring nat the natural consequences. So it was here to be a bribe. So that, it, it, this well, that. I don't, right? no, that's not what, what I'm concerned about is not whether there's an intention to do so to, on the part of the applicant. What I'm concerned about is whether we have integrity to the process. Right. And there is a question about the integrity to the process if what's happening is a decision is being made in response to promises that are being made that are that are not the natural consequences of the But yeah, yeah, we're given the yeah. Yes, we're given the task to take care of our county. That's right. And yeah. in doing that, you're looking at what this, what what the impacts of the project are going to be, positive and negative. Now, one of the impacts that you don't know is what the applicant is going to decide to do with respect to contributing money to the community that's right. not required. Right. And there, it, there's a court case in in. Butler County, where what the court did is it said that the focus in the CUP process on the voluntary payment by the applicant was a grounds to reverse the decision of the county commission because of the the possible um, because of, because of that appearance because of that that linking of what somebody is going to do that doesn't naturally come with a project in exchange for a favorable decision on the CUP. It's kind of like what Mr. Uh, Siebert or Cyber, Cyber Chuck, 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 Chuck said yes. the other day. Yes. But you know, we know what we're going to, what we get in taxes. Pretty right. much, you can pretty much know what we're getting in taxes. And usually, well, in our case here, the pilots that we have received in the past, and the ones that I've read as far as proposed, and that's not what. Well, they had even received P5. You do have a proposal in there. It surely does not match what we get in taxes. Hall. So we do kind of have an idea of what is best in county as far as dollars. If you use that, I mean, I've read lots of those statistics. No, I, 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 under, I understand, and I, I think that the I think what you'll find is that the state at the, the state legislature made a decision that it, it was going to grant property tax exemptions for these projects. And that's a decision that is in their area of concern to make. And the decision that is not in their area of concern to make, but is in yours, is, is this land a suitable one for the area in which it's proposed? And so the state legislature gets to decide on the tax yeah. question. You get to decide on the land use question. And they might not agree with you in Topeka about the land use question. You might not agree with them about the tax question. Well, I would hope that that you know, to me it's one big picture, and to what I have to weigh for whether for the whole county. I mean, that's it's it's using our ground, using our farmers' ground, and we hope for the best of intent, stuff like that. But uh, in, in the long run, I mean, there's there's things that's impacted by it that we can't sit here at the table and talk about. I mean, we can talk about them, we can think of them. You, who knows? Don't have no. Per problems too many problems coming in from the north project right now I mean there seems to be concerns so but 
every project is different. Well, that's, yeah. that's why that's what you're elected to figure out. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, when, when we do these um, uh, discussions on the road maintenance agreement, the pilot agreement, and commissioning, yes. can the commission be a part of that? Last year, we had just certain people. That there's, there's no inherent limitation as long as, I mean, it, it's, if what we're doing is you're sitting down and having discussions that are outside of any uh, exception in the Open Meetings Act, then it's going to be a public discussion. That's the only limitation, but there's no inherent limitation on you being involved in, in as, a, as a commission in the discussions. Well, I, I guess part of my problem is I felt like, and nothing personal, but I felt like, you know, when you're discussing a pilot agreement or decommissioning agreement with big industry, and then you put lay people in there that have absolutely no ex expertise in that field, I feel like a lot of, that's where I think we fell short up north. We need Donald Trump here to negotiate our contract. But we need somebody with experience on the same side because they got experience. So we need to have somebody with experience as well. You can handle that with it as you, as you decide to handle it. Any other questions? for your input and information and I take for granted the commission is clear now on procedure. Are you? I believe I am. Okay. <laughs> as, a, as a lay person. <laughs> well, I, I do have a lot of concerns of possibilities of working problems out, both road road and you know school payments I think the new project has met with our some of our superintendents in this area already and stuff like that so those kind of things will be you know to me as part of the whole program but I can't do that because I got to decide on the, just what you told me yeah. yeah these these things evolve and they have their own yeah complications correct yeah I thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for the information. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay, that was the last thing on the agenda, so uh, this time we'll open up for public comment. Comments from the public? Now's your chance. business uh, Brad we had a uh, citizen taxpayer that contacted me requesting to use a blacktop road in Marion County to run a 5k race this Saturday uh, this, uh, we've had we've had these things go on over the county over the years and none of us are sure if they were permitted or they just did them, or but uh, I was thankful that this individual contacted me. So, uh, in discussion, we decided to uh, seek counsel from you on the right way to handle that. I guess uh, Tina does say we do have a special. Uh, we have a, a special, special event that we could utilize potentially. Um, Chairman Becker had mentioned that it's for a family reunion. It doesn't appear that it's going to be. So we're talking about, you know, we're not talking about 200 runners. We're talking yeah, about everything's probably small. 10 or 15. Yeah, and it, the, the statutory guidance on it, uh, they do expressly deal with things that can damage. You know, we talked about this very recently. So those things involve getting a hold of the uh, Department of Transportation and the Secretary or the designate and getting special permission along with our permit. Uh, I don't know that that's a necessity when you're talking about that type of road, road race, you know, running event. Uh, 
other than the safety concerns, and those would be ours, not the, the state's typically. Uh, so the permit would cover that portion of it. I, I think it can be done. Um, we just need to have that with the permit and make the appropriate arrangements for if we want to have any kind uh, of. Can we excuse leasing. ourselves from the funds, from all responsibility of this? Indemnification, we can go ahead and draw that. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. Um, I have a question on that. Um, when, when we do those, when you sign off, or you know, you're not responsible. Um, back in the old days, when we used to run race cars, every time you go to the track, the driver of the car would have to sign a release of liability. Mm -hmm. However, if something happened to him, rolled the car, whatever, that didn't prevent his sister, his brother, his mother, dog suing. That's right. So, okay, I just don't want to make. Okay. That's the other no. caveat. So we can do it. For whatever value that may have to us. Okay. Thank you. I thought. <laughs> so, what's the data? Commission is. Yeah. Earlier, they had voted to approve um, pending your advice it, or your. It, it's it's certainly do that's something within their power to do. That's the short form answer in terms of the initial question. Pragmatically, the. Um, Concern about liability and, and that sort of thing, as that impacts your decision, that's more of, like, of a uh, administrative concern. Legally, you can, you can do it. Well, you know, like we talked before, there are people out running every day. Yeah. There are people out bicycling yeah. every day. Yep. Um, there is a there has been a 5K or something at the county lake now for a number of years, and I don't know that they've ever come to the commission. Yeah, I think once or twice. But most time you just see them out there running. Yeah. Well, Pain on ground. One thing with that special events permit that we also give a copy to law enforcement so they know that something is going to be going on. That just gives them a heads up. Yeah. So if we're going to have require them to utilize that permit, does the commission want to think about on whether to waive the $50 permit associated with that? I'd make a motion to waive the permit fee. Exactly. We'll discuss. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have that permit? I guess I can take it with me and drop it off with them. Uh, yeah, so, or if you have their contact information, maybe we could do it electronically. So, okay. So, will we know who the family is in case I'm driving yeah. down the road and I see? Yeah, I can, I'll just give Tina the individual's telephone number. Maybe she can just contact him and give him his email or whatever. Does that work? Sure. Yeah, I have one more question for Brad. When are you done? I'm, I'm done. Brad, you sat here and listened to an attorney, and I don't mean for you to criticize another attorney or anything like that, but in your opinion, is there anything else that you see that uh, the commission should be aware of or thoughtful of in going on towards next week? I will go ahead and provide you with a a fairly detailed checklist for that meeting in terms of your alternatives to the process. Even though that we've got a, we've got a consultant, I'm not criticizing no. anything that those guys have no. done. I just do that to give you a script. Okay. As you go through it, you've kind of discussed with him what the parameters are, so and that's what I was hoping would occur. Um, the only other editorial comment I'll make is if um, Expedition comes in with modifications and you either inquire of them or they choose to voluntarily with your permission address those things and it does kind of get into that issue of do you then have comment on the opposing side of it in the interest of equity and fairness so that's going to be one you're going to have to decide if it just comes to you as it is and there are no changes and there are no uh, provisional requirements for modification or change from one for recommendation is that's that's set now in terms of what after all the hearing and everything has been done, the vote's been taken, you're going to get a staff recommendation in detailed form as to what to do and go forward from there, and it comes to you for that reason. Um, if it goes just as is, then I'm very supportive of the hearings that have been had, and everyone had the opportunity in the right forum to go ahead and do that, so you don't necessarily administratively rehash that, I don't mean that in a bad sense, you just don't, because you could be at it again for days. Um, and. Um, it, it starts to get to be more of an issue of looking at everybody again, get to say everything they were wanted to, and were they all present, and that kind of thing. Where in the earlier one, I think you've at least made a pretty good faith effort to do that. 
But if the rules change a little bit, if, if the applicant comes in and asks for some additional modifications or clarifications on any of those conditions that are, that are I assume, going to be noted and imposed uh, for an up or down vote, then the question will be, okay, now do I open this up? And that will be a decision you guys make. That would be a concern I have because I'm speculating there'll be a, quite a few people there. And if we do open it up, we may be in for a marathon. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and that's Although beyond. I'm not saying that's good, bad, or yeah. otherwise, but. That's just a practical consideration of all over because if new information is brought to you by the applicant, then you know if you're sitting there on the other side of it, you may very well wish to say, wait a minute, um, I'd like to address that. And you still have the choice of whether you allow that or not. So that's just, I'm just, it's an inevitable no, just thing. just think in the matter of fairness. I mean, if, yeah. if there's modifications, are we being fair then by not opening up? I'd say not. Typically, at that point, you will. Uh, but you know, again, I, you don't have to. I just wanted to bring that up because that wasn't discussed, and and I don't honestly know what all may be done. Uh, I know that there were some discussions about clarifications, as ought to often in the case with something that has the kind of breadth of, of this type of an application. Um, and if if they come in and submit that to you, um, then you're going to have to make the decision. To, okay, well, now what do well, I Clarifications do? wouldn't be such an issue. It'd be a no, modification. No, in clarifications, if it's just simply saying, okay, I want to be sure I understand what this recommendation is, where it will become an, a, a much more uh, involved decision, is I uh, would like to modify that a little bit. Um, the that, minute that happens, then. that institutes. In my past experience, more that's. Discussion. Yeah, that, that gets to the question of, all right, now am I going to allow um, counter opinions, that kind of thing? You know? Logically, uh, I think people have the uh, ability to ask that. Uh, you would say, this is new, or this is different, or this is not what was decided. Okay. Commission, we've heard, we've sat through the plans of the commission. Okay. Uh, we have not expressed our opinion to the public in here. I mean, maybe, the street, whatever. I don't, <clears throat> don't care. I'm just saying that as of next week, before I make my vote, I will have a sum up the total of what all I've seen and what all for my vote. So I might, it, it, I will be going back to bring things up at the meeting that I didn't see done or was done, whatever. Now, do you feel as a commission that should be part of our vote or not? I mean, I don't want to do something that that's not going to be. And I guess go to YouTube. So are you saying that you just need clarification? No, I'm saying I've got my clarification from the meetings, and the reason that I I picked up from what I need from the meeting to the reason why I will vote, but there's some things that was not addressed in the meeting by any zoning or planning or person of the public that I have a concern of. And so I will address that next week before I vote. Okay. And that's I'm just telling you that's what I will do. Am I violating any process in that? No. Okay. Basically, it, it, it comes to what I'm understanding, and I won't put words in your right. mouth, but right. each of you have the right to, to tell the public that whom you serve, this is why I'm voting the way I'm voting, yeah. and these are the concerns that I have, and this is how I ended up coming to my decision. If you want to do that, you're certainly welcome to do that from the bench. That's different than opening something up for okay. debate or asking for additional input. I mean, you're taking what's been recommended to you and, and providing action on it mm -hmm. based on your vote. And if you then want to say, here's why, yeah. um, and here are the things that I heard, and here's what I have by that I've considered, uh, that's the right each of you have. Other subject matters, but no, it's not that. So hey. just a minute, we're not okay. public comment. Uh, I guess the next thing that I would like to address is, and I should have done it with those two, other two while they're sitting here, I guess, is after yay, nay, whatever happens here, I have some concerns, and we'll, we'll address those at a later time. 
yes, that, that would be the proper time after the vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have some I have some concerns of for Marion County, and and I will I will address them probably after the vote. That will probably be the time to properly address them. So, right now, we have a set of laid out rules to follow, zoning, planning, rules, and things like that. But that's where this whole process has been through for a lot of years, and we're trying to wrap this project up, yay or nay, one or the other. So, so Brad, I, I guess I bring one question, and it's transparency. Um, I spent months reading a lot of information and data and stuff like that, and now all of a sudden I'm kind of surprised to find out that there are signed agreements and stuff out there. I've never had them, and I've requested all that information and stuff, and now I'm kind of swung back again because I'm thinking, Again, I don't have all the information. The ones that I've seen are not signed, um, and so I, I, I'm just at a loss again. And it just blows my mind how, how in the world we can read and not have have all the information when you request it, why you, we just don't get it. Where, where's the transparency? I just that blows my mind. I'm fairly sure that you had requested all those agreements and you've received them a long time ago. So. I've, I've been going back and rehashing everything and just refreshing my because it's so much. Mm -hmm. And There's so a I have some drives up the kazoo and I've just been going over and over and over. And I have, I've seen agreements, proposals, nothing signed. Uh, I've seen promise letters signed, but I haven't seen the actual proposals Maybe. signed. And I might have misstated proposals instead of agreements. I'm not going to say that I haven't done that. But seem like we knew X amount of dollars to school districts and things like that. I've seen all that. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Signed. That's just, as a, that's why I said there it. There are a proposal multiple sets of signed documents, and I know that board, the board took action on some of that like stuff. Did, so we just so. need to go back and look and yeah. see what was done, and we'll send them again. But I know that they were sent with the, the signed documents. I mean, we have them all scanned. I know they were sent. So, so then I guess... I'll just have to stop over and put it in a cord so I can get them before we need them. Uh, you won't have to because I think it would be appropriate for, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure Pat's going to need to look at it. Um, what I'll do before next week and hopefully pretty soon is to go ahead and go back and look at whatever board action that was and make sure that we know what the signed agreements, what's in place and what isn't. So the board, you guys will all get that. Yeah, so it'd be nice to know page. if there was actually anything approved at the commission level. Other than the CEP. I, I know that there are signed agreements in those files. So. And, and it, you know, we're looking at a little over half. Maybe the, begin, the beginning project was a little over half of what, I don't know what the square feet is or air miles, but now we have a bigger ball. And my problem being is if we have some for here, well, then what for the rest of the project? That's, that's where I'm at with this. So we'll, we'll, well wait your total sum up. Yeah. It would be the total sum up. Yeah. I mean, and, because I'm sorry. No. And would new agreements then supersede anything that was, yeah. or yes. are those set? Don't know until I see them. That's I have not read those either. And honestly, that's probably a question for that gentleman over there when yeah. they yeah. look at them. But um, they they most assuredly can supersede, but it's done expressly by that subsequent agreement. Um, they did their application process fairly carefully, as I recall, reviewing it. So the one that's in place in terms of CPA, they, they did a supplemental. So they're really dealt with in two pieces uh, right now. So whether that will spill over any of these rooms depends on how they're worded. Yeah, I mean, I'm concerned now at this point. Who we have both road maintenance agreement A and road maintenance agreement yeah. B and pilot A and pilot right. B. Right. Or do they combine under the new? Yeah. And for your experience too, on, on the Doyles and so on, but they have to meet all the um, uh, criteria and stuff on okay. Article 31, 1, uh, 31 108 to 111, and it's not there. How do we address that? Because it's gone. So, how do we enforce something that's no longer there? Well, it's like a, a certain types of retroactivity in, in the law. If you have something, and again, I'm just making a general statement now without going through this uh, and, and asking those guys what they have done and not done, but 
um, you can have the applicability of something that was in place at a particular point in time uh, apply to an existing set of circumstances and then any subsequent kinds of applications may or may not have that same application at all. If it's gone, then it's no longer applicable to the, to the newer portion. You can have them, there is the potential to deal with it differently depending upon how the CUPs are done and if they were combined, which they were not. Um, so that's something Pat will address, I'm sure, as part of looking over all of these agreements as well. Has to be supplied. To yes. Okay. And you need to see. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, on can I ask can Go ahead. other notes? On two notes here, I wanted to ask, um, and this is, um, I don't know why, it's, I guess I'm going to ask this anyway. You can tell me I shouldn't ask it, but I'll ask it. So, I was wondering, um, it, it came to my attention, I, and again, I, I was going back to uh, Pat Hewitt's U.S. bill to where he was having phone conversations with Andrew uh, Hodges, I think it is. Holder. Holder, I'm sorry, yes, Holder, our uh, attorney for the lawsuit by KCAM, okay? And that kind of struck me a little odd because uh, I go to all these trains and so on, talk to KCAM quite a bit. So I did contact KCAM about that and actually, and I'm just asking you, what I was told is that's kind of a no-no because they're not gonna pay for any of that that's considered an associate counsel. And we have to either make a choice of staying with our counsel that they, you know, which is in our contract that they assigned for us, and if we want to retain our own counsel and pay for that's fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if that isn't something that we need to address too. <coughs> the short form answer to that is yes, always, because you want to be certain you know that you're you're um, participating in an appropriate way with your coverage. I, I will make one comment in a generic sense, not specific to this, because otherwise we're going into executive. Um, it is not unusual for uh, your attorney of record to try to in educate themselves about and, and including um, anything that has transpired or forwent their participation. You know, I talked to Andrew on each and every one of these actions that KCAM has hired him for um, because I'll have some general information just by definition uh, that he is useful to him. Matter of fact, I need to talk to him today on one of our other actions to see if we're on the same page about uh, closure of that one and getting it resolved pursuant to kind of a, an agreement that has been reached and tentative for. So it, it wouldn't, it doesn't shock me to see it to a limited degree at the outset. Now, if it became um, in, an, in an action a regular thing, then yes, I think that's where KCAP comes in and goes, not unless we've approved uh, you to have any form of consulting or associate counsel. Uh, are we going to pay for that? Because otherwise, you can get 20 attorneys involved and then go on summer vacation based upon the one. <laughs> and isn't that something, too, that uh, we've come to the commission to, to actually hire him to do that? Yes. Because he was not. Yes. Okay. K yeah. Camp is not paying for, for Pat Hughes. No, and I know. That's build, my point. Right. That's so, my point exactly. So I, when he calls him, we're going to pay for him plus our insurance. Right. So that's you saw that on the bill. I and do. I do know that. Um, I believe Mr. Holder did contact him for background information. So, but he is, but but Pat Hughes has not represented the county in any way on that lawsuit. It's just been Andrew Holder. And then on my other subject, have you heard anything on MCCEDC yet? Have we got those records that we're still waiting on? What records? We're waiting for payroll. You've seen them. No, you, I have not. You have okay. never given me the payroll <laughs> records. The you, everything, asked, okay, okay. Everything that we received, you have seen. We I never received that. anything else. I, okay, so then yeah. you were going to, you, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, and the answer is, yes, I do. And the answer is no, we've not received anything okay. else. Okay, so are we still pursuing that since we authorized for you to go ahead and if, pursue if, that? If that is the commission's wish, yes. That yeah. is what we voted on, that to be the wish. Yes, I'm still holding out on it. I mean, there's still documentation out there that you know, you can't, I can't mm -hmm. really close my files, what I've been studying on. Do I get those? Anything else, Commission? Okay, that was the last thing on the agenda. So, we'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
did care one thing, but I'll wait for next week to say it, I guess. Because it was on the long letters of David Mueller.